my life revolves around my kids. It's tough juggling school, the gym, training, work. It, you know, sometimes it can, can get overwhelming, but you kind of got to you know, look at the, the bigger picture and, and realize, you know, why you're doing it. I just try to take advantage of every opportunity I get because it truly is once in a lifetime opportunity, you know? Double two, three, come on. Hard, let's go. You win the Ultimate Fighter Finals, you get a six-figure contract, you get a Harley Davidson, you know, UFC pretty much, you know, pushes you and, and kind of guides you through your, your career, so it's a life changer. My favorite part of the day is when you guys go to school. You know why? Why? Because No, because you guys learn. I don't research. Daddy, I have a question. What's the question? Why when you walk your butt shakes? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Why does your mouth move when you walk? I just want them to learn from me fighting that Whatever you want in life, you have to go for it. Because so many people, when I told them I was going to do this, said, you're out of your mind. You're too old to start. You're too this. You're too that. All right, love you. Later. Whatever goals they have in life, I just want them to see me pursuing mine and just give it 110%. And whatever happens, happens. If you fail, you gave it your best. If you succeed, great. It's funny, man. I ran into Chris Weidman at Synergy in Baldwin, just lifting weights. And he was like, yo, what are you doing? Because we wrestled together in high school. And he was like, yo, I'm doing MMA. I'm like, all right, cool, what's that? He's like, you know, boxing, jiu-jitsu, wrestling all together. I'm like, oh man, that sounds good. And he said, yo, come down to the gym, check it out. See if you like it. I tried out this MMA stuff, fell in love. Six months later, I had my first fight. And I've been hooked ever since, man. It was like an outlet for me to compete. Without Chris, I would have never been involved in this sport. The amount he's, the amount he's improved is kind of crazy. Like, he was a straight football player when he came in here. Just, yeah, like almost 300 pounds and monster. Uh, zero cardio, like every football player that comes in here. I give him a lot of credit. You know, he has, he has two kids and uh, he's had a full-time job. To come in here and work as hard as he does every day, uh, and, and with everything he goes through, uh, he's an inspirational story. Stella, he's not playing with a box. Football is like my first love. I finished playing college ball at Fordham, um, and, I, and I, you know, went tried out for the NFL and, and didn't quite make it. If I had told people five, six years ago, I'm going to fight in the UFC one day, I'm going to be in the cage, they looked at me like I was crazy because they're like, "Why? You got a college degree, you got a double major, you don't need to do that. Why don't you just..." Work the nine to five, go to the office, you can make good money doing that. That's not who I am, that's not how I want to live my life. It's just, it's not, it's not me. Eddie Gordon's first born session, I really don't remember what I do remember about Eddie Gordon. He was about 300 pounds and he worked his butt off and he got down to probably about 220. So I think right around that time, we probably start having him spar and there was other guys in the gym that were kickboxing and he used to just jump in there and do his work and, and leave. Well, I'm gonna say out of everybody, he was the weakest start, like, you know what I mean? But man, it just, really what I love about him, determination, never quit, you know, could barely get his leg off the floor in the classes, and you know, he just stuck. Best part about it, get to wake up and do it all again tomorrow. See, yeah, you can't really tuck the shirt in. The company is a home remodeling company. We specialize in energy efficient retrofits for homes. We do like remodeling, all like exterior remodeling. So we like sell windows, roofing, siding. The schedule is a little bit different where he's really just working in the evenings most of the time. So he was able to train, able to do everything he's been doing, able to raise his kids. Yeah, I sparred and did like strength and conditioning this morning. I couldn't do it yesterday. I'm a big fan of the UFC, so um, it's not like a, a strange or a different um, like world to me. When he told me he had another crack at it, I was like, dude, first thing I said is like, you gotta lose weight. Like if it's 205, it's 185, like I know you're not walking around at that, like get on the salads and we bust his balls a little bit about that. A lot of times you think of like a UFC fighter as like a brute or some like guy who like can't string sentences together and I know that's not the case with most athletes, but like it's definitely not the case with Eddie. Like he's a well-educated guy. 
he's smart, he's funny, he's like entertaining, he's like he's like what you want the sport to be. Like when you meet someone who's a champ, you're like, oh, I hope he turns out to be a cool guy. Like he's that type of guy. Be comment. careful, I love you. I promise. I love you. Be I careful. Always. I know. It's I safe know. in the football. He sent me a text message that he was in the hospital, he broke his toe, I really didn't know how bad it was until I really got there and noticed that his actual bone had broken out of his skin. I'm in the doctor's office. I said, what's wrong? My toe is broke. Just like that. The doctor tell him, well, Mr. Gordon, you have to do this surgery. He said, cut my toes off. I don't need my toe, I need my feet. And the doctor said, that's impossible. I can't do that. He said, well, whatever you're going to do, you work on my foot, get it ready. I have two weeks to go. It's it's nerve-wracking. You know, every day is scary because he can call me and be like, oh, I hurt myself today, or this happened, or that happened. I'm at the hospital. It's, you never really know what's going to happen. I know his style. You know, we trained for six weeks together. He slept on the bed under me, you know. I know what he likes. I know his dislikes. I know everything about him. So it makes it easy, man. It's much better. It's going to be a great fight, you know. That's it. He knows a lot about me. I know a lot about him. And it's just going to be awesome. You know, you walk in the gym, never complain. Not once. Did his work. Uh, he was good to be around. I knew I was gonna. I knew I was gonna bomb well with him. He's an East Coast guy. I'm an East Coast guy. Yes, yeah, my two boys, man. This is why I fight. Man. So I came with my kids to come. I feel like this is more for anybody that got me here at this point. You know, um, I got one job to do on Sunday, and that's what I'm really focused on. I want everybody else to enjoy it. But in the same aspect, I want to live in the moment and just enjoy everything. You know. If, if, if he's uh, accurate with the submissions, it's one of those things where I don't want to give him any issues. I believe he's going to shine. I, he really wants this. He's got this pin. I can't bring the hand to the bicep, okay? I bring the bicep to the hand. I so feel he knew he'd be here, and he is here, and hopefully, uh, you know, things work out, and he could, this could be his full-time job. You know what I mean? Oh. <laughs> after I weigh in, I'm going to still eat healthy, but after the fight's over, I want a big... Slice of pizza with ziti on it. Maybe even a buffalo chicken slice of pizza. I haven't had pizza in probably two and a half months, three months. And my kids eat it in front of me all the time. It drives me crazy. That, maybe chicken parm and cheese. Definitely something with pasta. I'm going to get pretty, pretty big rather quickly. I'm going to try not to, but it's inevitable. Nipping it down slowly here we are, it's a little after 5, playing tomorrow at 12. He'll be within, get to the point where he'll wake up tomorrow within a few pounds of the weight. It's nothing he hasn't done and pretty much a lot of the training has got the weight off of him, you know. Tomorrow morning we have a few options. He will eat, that's the biggest thing, he will eat, he will have energy. My first trip in Vegas just for my son fight. I'll have my bottle of water and my painkiller. <laughs> this way when my head starts to beat, I have something to control my heart rate, okay? I have no doubt in my mind that he's gonna win. Diego Lima in heavy truck Gordon. 186 for Eddie Gordon. See, my mom calls me truck. My brother gave me that nickname when I was like in like fourth grade and it's been it stuck with me ever since. I actually got the nickname when I was like a skinny 135 pound kid. So I guess I grew into the nickname. 
over over time. I weighed in at 186. Right now, after rehydrating everything, 211.6. So, got a lot of fluids in me, ready to rock and roll. I knew right away that when I came into this sport, I ultimately wanted to be in the UFC because that's like the that's the uh, the, the NFL of all uh, mixed martial arts. I stood. I trained to be the best man. Like I want to ultimately be the champion. That's that's it. Like that's my that's my realistic goal. He just keeps saying, "I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna do what I have to do." He would wake up in the morning. I don't know his reason, and he would write on the mirror every morning what his achievement have to be. I don't know what the reason or what him get from it. But that's how determined he is. Good. We're in Las Vegas, Nevada, the Mandalay Bay uh, Hotel. Tonight's the night, man. It's uh, fight night, Ultimate Fighter finale. I'm pumped. Just finished a little workout to get my lungs uh, open and going. And that's it, man. Ready to rock and roll. Ready to win this whole thing. When I got to the arena, all the nerves went away. Everything was like I was at peace. I was like where I belong. I imagined this moment happening two, three years ago. That was his dream. That's what he wanted to do since the day I met him. He's great at being a father, he's great at being a boyfriend, he's great at everything he does. Work he was great at. They don't, they want him to stay there forever, they don't want him to leave after this. They already begged him, oh please don't leave. When he started fighting, he just started out with one intention, you're going to have to go to the top. He make every plans around it. The only thing that bothers him in the beginning was he going to have to leave his kid for weeks ahead and don't see them and that going to be hard on him. I just want to say, I haven't seen my kids yet. That's what I want to see, like their faces. They, they must have been pumped. Like I actually, when I was walking out, I saw them and that was like probably the most, that was like the, big, the best feeling ever. Like I got to touch my kids before I walked into the cage. Like that was just, you went to my motivation. That was just, that was unreal. That was a moment that I'm going to always remember. Some people would just give up and just fold and say, all right, screw it, man. I'm just going to go the easy route. I'm just going to go work the nine to five. I'm just going to give up on my dreams. But I said, you know what? It's going to be that much more satisfying the harder it is to get where I want to go, you know? And I just try to take advantage of every opportunity I get because it truly is a once in a lifetime opportunity, you know? And you don't want to see it pass you by. <laughs>